The Soul of Money Chapter 1 The Philosophy of Money Money and Soul 1 How much money do you have after all your expenses? Do you spend all your hard-earned money for a standard of living you don't really need? Taking it all in, I find it is more trouble to watch after money than to get it. Montaigne All the perplexities, confusions and distresses in America arise not from defects in their constitution or confederation, not from want of honor or virtue, so much as the ignorance of the nature of coin, credit and circulation. John Adams in a letter to Thomas Jefferson, 1787 Based on a philosophical roundtable discussion about money on a New Age-type TV show, the insights they came to about money are as follows. Money is a relevant need in life but it is only one part of it. Life is much more diverse and rich than money. Money will come when you are doing the right thing for you, helping people in the marketplace by what comes from your soul. The power attributed to money is an illusion and a fantasy that suckers a lot of people in. Money is a nightmare to a lot of people. You can never give or receive money as a gift. There are always strings attached. Look at the following factors of life. Basic survival. Sex. Love, belonging, power over other people, family, recreation, fun, pleasure, freedom to use your time to do as you please, soul, inspired lifestyle, money. The way you handle all of these factors determines what kind of person you are. Money is good to the extent that it will help you reach some of these factors, namely to do with your free time what you want have loving relationships with the people you want and to do whatever else you might want. The point is that money should be the means to the end of living a glorious life for yourself not an end in itself to try to get some joy out of your bank statement and the endless acquisition of new material things. The eternal question is, does the pursuit of money in a life obsessed with material things lead to an impoverished soul, to me? The pursuit of money is good when you're doing it to enable you to live a lifestyle following your soul. The ultimate best lifestyle is to do what you love to do anyway, follow your soul, and earn a good amount of money in the process because you're either helping, amusing, or inspiring people in the process. Find the true art that lives inside of you and live it out regardless of what it is. Divorce money from emotion where you use it as a drug to do something for you emotionally. Use it to enhance the real you who lives in your soul, the essence you had as a person when you were born. Money can't buy everything, certainly not emotional well-being. The best it can do is give you the means to live out your true nature, to seek out wisdom and inspiration to understand your life and be yourself. If you use money to do anything other than this, you lose the game of life like a lot of wealthy people who rely on their money as the crutch to sustain otherwise spiritually empty lives. Be aware of your existence as an individual and live it out. Your true identity has nothing to do with trying to impress others in the outside world therefore in order for money to be used purely, you don't do anything with it to aggrandize your ego to show off or try to impress others. You just use it to find the real you and live out your identity. Materialism should be nothing but the means to achieve your true identity. All that other crap society throws out at you about looking cool and trendy to impress others and belong to the popular tribe of humanity is all meaningless at least to people like me. The only thing that ultimately matters is to find out what's in your soul and live it out but within the context of this grandiose, visionary view of life, you have to be practical and pragmatic enough to live in the real world of basic material needs because that's always the bottom line and unless you have them taken care of, you will never move forward to pursue your grandiose visions of aesthetic beauty, life as it should be according to what you feel in your soul. Your ego is the person you want to be to impress other people and everything you do to achieve this end. Soul is who you are as is, the way you were created. An idealistic life is to pursue your soul to mastery without worrying about outcomes in the so-called real world. This is the real battle of life and if it takes you through poverty and hardship so be it in your quest to follow your journey. Conversely, if you live for money and the ego to show off and impress others, regardless of how powerful and admired you think you get in the real world, ultimately, you have nothing but an empty shell of an existence. 
The lore of these two opposing worlds is so great that regardless of where you go in one, you will still feel a longing for and pull from the other so if you want to be truly enlightened in a capitalist world, you will pay constant vigil to the lifestyle of money, ego and the proverbial fast lane of cool looking material things and cheap thrills whilst following what you feel in the deepest recesses of your soul. Walk the fine line between a life lived for spiritual inner meaning and a life lived for material comforts and excesses. Capitalism is the religion of the modern world so if you want to keep the dignity of your soul intact, you must be forever vigilant that you don't fall into a lifestyle obsessed with money and material things to give you your joy and sense of meaning because these things by themselves are not what your soul is all about or meant to be by the spiritual laws of the universe that say we're more than the food we eat and the clothes we wear. We're spiritual beings in physical bodies and as such, it's only proper that we live by this, by some intangible, intuitive spirit that was already in us when we were born even though in most people, it got covered over by the illusions of the world at a very young age. In essence, your soul is always good. What comes out of it is a desire to do something worthy with your life, to sing your particular song, to manifest the person you were born to be. This is a good thing to pursue to serve humanity somehow while earning your keep and not exploiting other people, however, if you find yourself in the quest for money and are willing to exploit others to fulfill your notions of success, you have violated the true spirit of life and become another priest in the religion of capitalism. When the many so-called artists and creative types follow their true passions as they say, most barely earn enough money to pay rent but when they tailor their gifts to the needs of the world and use their natural energies to serve the world somehow, many will get rich or at least, earn enough money such that they don't have to worry about it. Your most vivid and intense experiences should be the ones you create in your soul but our modern world with its TV, shiny new material things in malls, glossy magazines, etc. has handed us all these experiences in exchange for paltry amounts of money so it seems so much easier to just go with the flow, get any old dull job to earn the money to get these things rather than slowing down enough to follow our own souls and live by the vivid, intense images we feel coming out of them. Most people just follow the system's way of doing things at the exclusions of the souls they were born with. The world created by capitalism is fine and we must live in it but the only winners in life are those who get beyond this world to find something more real coming from their souls. It's quality of experience that counts. Unless you can have intense experiences that either move you, inspire you, or give you euphoric sensual pleasure in some way, your life is meaningless regardless of how big your bank account is or how many material things you own. We work to earn money to pay bills so what it comes down to is that we sacrifice some of the finite time of our lives to earn money to buy things. If you love the work you do and get something intrinsic joy out of it, it's no problem but if your job doesn't enhance your quality of life by being joyful and inspirational in some way, it means you're sacrificing some of your life for money so remember that if you find yourself falling into the trap the capitalist system wants, becoming a dumbed-down consumer who constantly needs to buy more new things than sacrifice the finite time of your life doing a mundane job just to make enough money to pay for them. Where does an inspired quality of life living for wisdom and transcendent experiences enter into it for the average working consumer? They have bought into this lifestyle promoted by the system at the expense of living by their souls. The love of money and material things for their own sake is indeed the root of all evil. The greatest wealth is a great ride of life, seeking out inspiration, wisdom, creative expression, friendship, nobility, dignity, honor, aesthetic beauty, sensual pleasures, love and even some material excesses if you want them but not subservience to this ideal that money and things will give you happiness. Money and soul too. For the many insecure people out there. Money is a tool to give them a sense of safety and comfort but the problem is that there's really no such thing as security in life because anything could happen at any time, divorce, accident, house burns down, contract a disease, health goes down, parents die, etc. The best way to live is to save some money but don't make it your god, live day by day for the enjoyment and inspiration you get out of it and be thankful if you have got the one thing that's more important than money, health because if you don't have good health, money is meaningless because you can't enjoy it. Don't tie money to your emotional well-being. Simply use it as the means to live the life you want. 
don't love it just because it's money. We often use money to try to buy friendship or love. We give our wives money to leave us alone, give our kids money in lieu of spending time with them, we give the waitress a good tip because we want her to like us, we buy things for our friends because we want them to like us and so on and so forth. In the search for love, especially if you have money, where is the point where your spouse loves you for you versus for your ability as a provider? Rich people have this problem. They never know for sure whether people like them for their money or for who they are as individuals. You can use money to fill your material needs, use it to acquire things you don't really need to try to make yourself feel good, use it to obtain some sense of status in the eyes of others, use it to get power over others or use it to give you the means to acquire free time and use that time to do what you really want to do. This is the way I see money. Other than the functional things and a few creature comforts, my love for money comes because I want to live a free life so much to do the things I want to do that I can't bear to work a regular job but I have to live in the real world and pay bills. Beyond that, I have no illusions about money. I go to the mall about once a year if that. If I need something, I buy it. I never shop for the random act of looking around for things to buy. My life is all about having the free time to do what I want which takes money which is my motivation for it not greed, status, power, etc. I believe my way is healthy because I'm aware enough to live in the real world but not be bound by it. I'm more concerned with living an all-around good life, using my finite time to do things I enjoy. Be wary if you find yourself using money to fulfill some emotional need in you, whether you buy things to make you feel better, collect a bunch of useless junk called collectibles by others with the same disease, Try to show off to others how wealthy you are, try to keep up with the Joneses, buy love and friendship, get power and control over others, save compulsively for the security of it, be an obsessive bargain hunter, buy your friends, use money as a security blanket or anything where you see your use of money tied in with your emotional well-being beyond being simply the means to pay your bills and live an interesting, good life. Money is controlling you somehow and you are using it for the wrong reasons. You want it to be more than it actually is and it isn't. It's just the means to cover your needs. Life should be considerably more spiritual, hedonistic, diverse and interesting than your relationship with money. If you don't worship money but respect it enough to pursue it to live a comfortable life for yourself, if you don't let the acquisition of material things control you, if you understand what money means to you, if you use money to enhance your life and give you pleasure, if you are not a slave to it such that you will use people and cheat them for it and if you realize that money can't give you happiness, just the means to be free to choose to live a better life then you are on your way to living. A good life. A good life takes effort in and of itself away from money so if you take a balanced view to money, you will be a lot better off than the poor guy who can't seem to make enough and always overspends and the rich guy who gives up everything else for his interest in money. Look at all rich people who are alienated from other people and live miserable lives then look at all the struggling artists out there. Neither side is right. A good life is a healthy balance of living in the real world of practical concerns and pursuing the meld of spiritual aesthetic hedonistic things that make up your true nature. The purpose of life is to manifest what God made you to be in your soul and to use money to help achieve this end, nothing more, nothing less. That's the real value money should be to an enlightened individual but no matter what we do, we can't get away from the fact that the bottom line of our lives is money, the need for it to take care of at least our basic necessities because if we don't, we will be homeless and the whole focus of our lives will shift from one of freedom and self-expression to one of great anxiety about our survival just for the basics. Practical common sense is always important no matter what else you aspire to do in life. Everybody has to be a business person one way or another to sell themselves to make enough money to survive. That's always the bottom line. Very few people get to live totally independent lives doing exactly as they please and either having enough money from an inheritance or something like that or are earning enough to live exclusively for the creatively inspired pursuits of their souls. Money is the instrument that gives us the freedom to pursue those creatively inspired lives with meaning and wisdom some of us aspire to so a wise person always knows how important money is in his or her pursuit of the good life. 
have the sense to recognize the value of money and use it to culture what you feel in your soul. Money and Soul 3 Money is the one-dimensional person's way to express themselves, their creativity, emotional well-being and personality. Very few people do much more than work any old functional job to get a paycheck then spend it on the things they think are cool based on advertising and this is how they define themselves. Some ordinary slightly chubby dude working some average functional job somewhere buys an SUV, a Nike shirt, an Oakland Raiders baseball hat worn backwards, mag wheels for his ride, an earring for his ear, Nintendo video games, season tickets to some professional sport, hip-hop shorts, a jet ski and he thinks he's a cool, jamming cat according to the corporate pop culture system which implanted all these ideas in his head. He took them to heart and this is how he defines himself because it's the message the capitalist world gave him about what a modern, cool, successful guy is. He's not like some guy like me who deal with my distaste for this brainwashing machine by purposely avoiding pop culture and never buying any of the so-called trendy brand name stuff. I have seen guys buy $100 sunglasses then walk around thinking they were really cool dudes because of these sunglasses they were wearing or people smoking because they think it makes them look cool. Enlightened people do the things they enjoy doing and never fall prey to all this capitalist brainwashing that's always going on out there. 20 years ago, if a guy wore an earring in his ear, he was considered a sissy. Nowadays, it has spawned a whole new industry, earrings for men just like tattoos and piercings which barely existed in the mainstream 20 years ago. These are just minor examples but a good example of great marketing as the cool tribe of humanity is Nike. People just got to wear that overpriced Nike stuff to give off the impression, look at me. I belong to the cool trendy tribe of humanity. I can afford overpriced sportswear because I'm a cool, happening cat. Your real self has nothing to do with all this ego stuff that society has created to make you a dumb consumer defining yourself by the things in it. Unless you can get past it to be who you really are in your soul, you will just be another brainwashed clone defining yourself by all that capitalist crap in the media like the guy I knew who really wanted to look cool in a Corvette so he put himself into heavy debt to buy one, paid the high insurance on it and the high repair and parts bills which were double that of an ordinary car. Find a way to earn your money by doing something from your soul that you love to do and you win the game of life. Money and Soul 4 Wealth is a state of mind the truly wealthy person is the one who doesn't want anything. You are an entity of worth outside of money. Be thankful for what you got. Live for spirit. Don't live for materialism. When you are doing the right thing in life which is to follow your soul to do something good with it to help people, the money will come. Sooner or later, you will develop the means to earn you your cash. This is the real purpose of life as far as earning a living goes. It shouldn't be just about earning a paycheck. It should be about following your soul to help humanity somehow and because of the divine karma of following your soul which is part of the natural universal life force if such a thing exists for real, you will earn enough money to live comfortably. Even if there is no such thing as divine guidance from the heavens, the best you can do is live in harmony with yourself. When you live like this and act out of a basic goodness to do something good with your life to help people, there is no reason why you should not succeed as far as earning a living goes. If you can imagine it, there is a world without money living inside your pure soul. This is what you should really live for, what's in your soul. You should be concerned with money just to the extent that it will enable you to live the life you feel in your soul. Beyond this, you shouldn't hoard it or make it just for the sake of acquiring it because it violates the principle of the natural harmony of the universe. Take just what you need and either give the rest away or work less and spend more time on soulful pursuits. Money is a tool to live a good life. It should not be used as a source of fulfilling your ego by buying a bunch of useless stuff you don't really need except to either show off to others or give yourself some illusory feeling that you're a part of the elite, high society crowd of humanity because you have all this stuff which the programs on TV say make you a winner in life according to that brainwashed, materialistic capitalistic viewpoint which promotes elitism, greed and excess as admirable qualities to aspire to, kinda like. You're a winner if you make a lot of money, buy a big mansion on the hill, wall yourself in, 
buy a bunch of frivolous stuff you don't really need and say, hooray for me, I have arrived, screw the rest of the plebes at the bottom of the hill. What I'm saying is that you are the person you are in your core. That's the real you. Money can't change that, it can only enhance it or make it sick. It's a means to an end. Beyond that, anything else you do with money is a fabrication. You can either get sucked into the dream of money solving all your problems and giving you a lifestyle of caviar wishes and champagne dreams or you can become a slave to money, working for it to buy a bunch of material things you don't really need for both status sake and to make you feel good. You can go into debt aspiring to this materially excessive lifestyle you've been brainwashed by. It's all in your head. In any event, enlightened people answer to their souls. Money is just the means to follow what's in there nothing more, nothing less. After I became wealthy one time before I lost it in the stock market, which is why I'm down on the stock market now and believe you should make money by doing something real or tangible, I realized that the extra money meant nothing to me. I had what I needed, so what? It didn't give me the thrill I was looking for. I bought some stupid, frivolous stuff like an expensive watch, expensive car, etc. I felt like a traitor to all my ancestors before me, most of whom were Polish peasants who worked the land. I was born to down-to-earth people who had pride in their basic, self-sufficiency lifestyles. I can't dishonor that. I'm totally against the ideology of material excess. Beyond all that, I still didn't understand why money meant nothing to me until I figured out that I lived by an inherent standard that constantly drove me to release my natural, inspired energy every day. Why? Because when you release your natural energy, you feel anywhere from good to transcendent, above the generic right of normal human consciousness and on top of that, the real challenge is to earn your self-respect every day. Money cannot give you self-respect. This is the big lie the American dream ideology never tells you, that self-respect is worth more than all the money in the world. You really don't need much in the way of material things but if you betray yourself and have no true self-respect as opposed to vanity which is a charade because it's image not soul, you really have nothing and most people in our society are hooked on making money way more than they're into earning their self-respect which is why we live in a society of lost souls. It's self-respect. This is the big thing almost nobody is consciously aware of this and being an artist of my life as opposed to buying into any of the massive brainwash out there and there's loads of it trying to tell you what it means to be a man, to be successful, to be vital, to be cool, to be macho, tough, etc. Money and Soul 5 Money is not required to buy one necessity of the soul. Henry David Thoreau Affluence brings with it boredom. Of itself, it offers little but the ability to consume and a life centered on consumption will appear, and be, devoid of meaning. Robert Bork In the long run, we are all dead so why knock yourself out acquiring more money than you'll ever need? You can't take it with you. Popeye Joe Make money your god and it will plague you like the devil. Henry Fielding Money can be a great instrument of enlightenment if you analyze your relationship to it. Nothing in this world is as interesting as money. Ihara Saikaku, 1642-93 Goodness is the only investment that never fails. Henry David Thoreau The easiest way to be financially free is to have few needs. An obscure Greek philosopher who lived about 200 BC said there are three ingredients necessary for happiness. Friends The freedom to do what you want includes financial security. The analysis of your life day by day to stay on top of who you are and what you want to do. For the freedom part, he says sure you need money to take care of your basic needs but money is like a bucket of water. You can only fill it up so high. After that, it spills out. His point was that money can make you happy to the extent that it can take care of basic material needs. Beyond that, it's excess and frivolous a sin against nature and humanity because you are violating the greatest natural law of all. Taking more than you need. Everybody who lives in some manner of excess has the thought at one time or another that they are living like this while some kid somewhere is starving. According to UNICEF, 
30,000 children die of hunger-related diseases on Earth every day. My belief, which I won't cover here because I've covered it in my other books, is that our material, capitalist society is what has destroyed our society, made us a bunch of soft, self-centered, greedy capitalists hooked on material things and pop culture entertainment for our thrills while I live a freer life. Materially I have only the basics. I refuse to live in excess which means I don't have frivolous junk including home decor cluttering up my house. I am what I do every single day not what I own. I live by an inner standard that tells me to release my natural, inherent inspired and aesthetic energy every day. To my way of thinking, this makes me a much happier, freer and peaceful person than just about everybody I know. Virtually everybody is brainwashed by something but me. The whole world is gone crazy and the way we use money right along with it. I've known so many brainwashed guys hooked on status and money that were lost souls that I just shake my head and wonder how people let themselves lose the only thing they own, the vital, free sense of purity they were born with which is who they really are. Beyond the basics, how much you own or what others think of you is irrelevant. The wealth of life is living a good quality inspired lifestyle every day. Money has little to do with it. I read a book which expanded on the theme of the proverb, Give me neither poverty or riches. Give me just what I need. It said that it's not good to be rich because it makes you lazy, it could make you vain and arrogant and it's morally wrong to have an excess of material goods while you know others are in such great need. This is true to a certain extent but at the heart of every soul in a capitalist country I'm sure there beats an overwhelming desire to hit the big score win the lottery or do something that makes you rich enough to do what you want and indulge your fantasies without concern for the plight of your fellow man which won't happen to most of us so you have to take on a wise, middle ground approach to money. Money is very simple, spend less than you take in, save the rest and make it work for you. Our materialistic pop culture society is horrible. People spend to try to feel good, to look good and feel rich which is the deception of the business machine to make you spend your money on frivolous things so you get caught up in the work-spend debt cycle, increasingly digging yourself in further. The cliché says that the greatest poverty is not material poverty but poverty of the soul. This is so true. Material needs and frivolities are two different things, worlds apart. You need very little to get by. Use common sense. In order to live a full life, there are certain things you must do and love of money is not one of them. You must respect money but in order to be truly happy, you must live for your soul and the pursuit of love and personal happiness. Money is the most important thing if you don't have it but if you do, you should use it to enhance the quality of your life and not abuse it by either using it as a symbol of power or buying material things to try to fill your soul up. If you do either of these things, you will be lost until and unless you find your true self. A proverb in the book of Proverbs in the Bible states that what you think about is where your heart is. If you think about money and material things, you're a lost human being. Define what success means to you. It should be about money to the extent that it buys you a reasonable amount of economic security but everything beyond that is excess. Even though most of us aren't rich enough to be financially free, you must never let the pursuit of money rob you of your true joys in life whatever they may be. I have been naturally disciplined all my life but when I got out there in the real world, I realized that there are a lot of flakes around without a clue and don't really care until the sky falls in on them. Don't be a fool. Take care of your money but remember that the best things in life are free, namely your ability to face each day alive, inspired, with some food and no physical pain. The universal constant is if you work for money and know how tough it is to get it, you will respect it. For people who have gotten it too easily or who have divorced the true feel of money from its worth by using credit cards, you will abuse it and stay lost until you find balance in your life and learn to respect it as an enhancement but not the be-all, and all I won't bore you with psychobabble, just tell you that you'd better be honest with yourself, examine your lifestyle, whether frivolous or frugal and learn to respect money. The base of all respect for money is to respect yourself first. If you respect yourself and you're a good person trying in life, 
somebody will recognize it and give you meaningful employment, a contract, business, or whatever and then you can use the money you earn wisely to enhance your life. Money is a very easy concept to learn. There are no experts. You can learn very quickly then take control and chart your own course. Educate yourself and keep up with your money matters for the rest of your life. Once you become educated, trust yourself. Don't fall for the most basic folly of all investing, there's so much information out there claiming to be hot stuff that you can't find the knowledge for the crap. Know your money, what you owe and what you have. Keep it simple because it's very simple. The bottom line of life is always money. Don't fall into the trap that almost everybody does, spend what you earn and more, living on credit. Use what you need and save the rest because there comes a crisis in everyone's life where they will need more money. Be thankful for your life right now. Pursue love and a sense of belongingness somewhere. Pursue your own road to self-mastery, follow your own plan not that of the world, i.e. keeping up with the Joneses. It's not all about getting more money, it's about using the money you have now wisely. Debt and credit cards after the grace period are the cardinal sins you're robbing your future to pay for your past. Money and Soul 6 Wealth gives you financial security. It also gives you a sense of confidence that no matter what, you will never be homeless. Wealth is bad when people become greedy, always wanting more money and material things. Lots of people sell their souls for money and material gain. They work jobs they don't like just for the money. They cheat people and do all kinds of immoral things for money. We all heard that the road to hell is paved with good intentions but very few of us see it happen before our eyes. It's not that hard for it happen. It happens all the time everywhere. It's not a big, drastic change from good guy to evil despot. It's like the frog in the pot of water slowly boiling. People sell their souls a little bit at a time. I went to an all-male military college. I had some cool friends there. Some of them are still cool but some of them have become big shot CEOs who have lost that sense of fun and idealism they once had. I went to our 30 year reunion. I was wondering what the hell happened to some of these guys. I wouldn't recognize them if I passed them on the street. Personally I have the same face I had at 20. These guys look fat faced, old, shriveled up. The way they lived for the past 30 years shows on their faces. They all sold their souls for some artificial value. Loads of people measure happiness with money. I still see the keeping up with the Joneses phenomena everywhere. We had a case locally where a guy bought two properties, tore them down and wanted to build a big three-story house there. The neighbors were against it. To me, it makes them look bad because it's a free society. Why I should care if some guy wants to build a mansion but he was an asshole too. He got on the news saying everyone was jealous of him. I thought they were all assholes for being so status conscious. If you believe the statistics then the average Canadian or a Mercian adult carries about $27,000 of debt not including a mortgage. People spend more than they make. Why would anyone do that? What do you really need? Not that much. I know because the things I use and need every day are basically almost nothing. I use the most basic things and everything else I own sits there unused for years at a time. People buy stuff, use it once then it sits there unused. People compare their material wealth to the wealth of others. People measure their lives by how much money they have and how big their houses are. The real measure of a great life is what you actually do day by day to release the natural energy in your free spirit. Many men work so hard to make money that they have no family life. A lot of middle class people feel bad because they do not live in a mansion even though they are living pretty good lives. Focus on what you enjoy. Buy what you need to be modestly comfortable then forget about material things after that. Do what you are most passionate about. Do not let your obsession with money destroy your ability to enjoy your life right now. Enjoy your life with what you've got. Control your own happiness regardless of your monetary situation.